<laughs> I'm going to bring up your next act. Uh, please make like you made before and welcome to the stage, Sue Thomas! Thanks for that wonderful welcome. Uh, yeah, my name is Sue. Um, it is purity or girl with cobwebs on a pussy. Yeah, that's my mother's idea. I, I, think, it's, I think it's why I like to write... Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's why I like to write erotic fan fiction, you know, uh, for my for my spare time. Um, yes, I um, I've been trying to put it on the internet. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been trying to put it on the internet, but they're very picky. They don't like you know best bestiality, um, interesting bestiality or necrophilia. And, um, yeah, you've got to get those in the right order. Um, yeah, so, but mine have pretty much all of those. And, um, yeah, so I put, I try and put them in the plastic folders now. You know, that, that way you can just wipe the jizz off with a cloth. I thought I'd, I'd read you, I'd read you one of my stories. Um, this, this one's, um, this one's stolen from, um, it's stolen from a, uh, an English show called uh, Silent Witness. And, um, yeah, the, the main character is a lady called um, Nikki, uh, Dr. Nikki Alexander, who's a very nice looking young woman. And um, Dr. Harry Cunningham, um, who's a baby. So, so they're in bed, <laughs> as you might expect. Harry is already naked. Nikki is still partly dressed. Blou blouse, panties and bra. This is like doctors and nurses, she says. Well, I'm the doctor, he said. What does that make you? The patient. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm a pathologist, this is kind of weird. You know, because she's dead, but she isn't. <laughs> and they're, they're not always dead. Th this, this guy came up to me the other, the other night and he said, you gave me an erection. And I, I, I thought, well, that's the first time I've had a standing ovation on stage. <laughs> the first thing he does is to undo the blouse. Habit kicks in. The body is that of a well-nourished female. She quips, well, I wasn't the one who suggested to, you know, you'd sit on dessert. It was very nice, he says. His voice is warm and playful as he kisses the skin just above her bra. He's saving the enjoyment of kissing her breast, like he saved eating the cherry on the top of her his dessert. <laughs> you know, this is how I this is how I know I'm a pervert because you know I was in that Time Box restaurant the other night, and they've got a, a sign over the cash register that says the tastiest box in town. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of wrong, isn't it? <laughs> he takes off her pants. She's clinical down there. Only a wispy landing strip remains after a careful waxing job. You're gorgeous, he noticed Harry, taking in her pristine pubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I'm a bit, I'm a bit old, old school about pubic hair. You know, I, I just sort of, you know, trim mine in the shape of a love heart. <laughs> and I am blonde. <laughs> but um, yeah, he takes, he takes off her bra. Starting at the top, he runs his finger like a scalpel across the warm skin between her extremely curved breasts. 
There is no response in the cadaver. But in Nikki, the nipples spring to attention like two pink pencil rubbers, where the, where the dead ones were slack. I'm not absolutely sure about that, but that's how I imagine them. His finger travels down his the body, down her body towards her belly button, and all the way to her pubes. She blindingly parts her legs. He describes everything as if, as if it were a part of an oral exam. The mom's pubis is the most perfectly shaved. The clitoris is semi-erect. Nikki, who is gagging for it, says, Don't stop! Don't stop! But unfortunately, I've got to stop at the moment. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, and I was Sue Thomas. <laughs> Thank you.